Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Nico from Peer to Peer University, um, and I'm really excited that we can we can do this uh, community call before the holiday crash begins. Um, I'm joined uh, today by Manny uh, from the Notre Dame Ed Education Center, um, and my plan was we uh, just kind of a bit of context. Um, I, sp I ended up happened to be in Providence, Rhode Island um, for a conference and many, I got a chance to meet many and it was just really nice to hear his take on how he's been using learning circles and also just his own process and his own pedagogy and himself. So I thought, man, I gotta, I gotta get this guy online and I gotta hear, I gotta share his own stories because he's got lots of stories for you and he has so much expertise. Um, so how this is gonna work is um, I'm gonna introduce Manny and many will kind of hold the floor for a bit and we'll have a kind of a discussion back and forth. Um, so I'm gonna hold the introductions until later. Um, and then when you, when you introduce yourself, you can, uh, uh, we'll have introductions later and you can ask any questions you want to, to Manny. And, uh, and then we'll open up the floor to just to hear from your, your own experience of learning circles and things you'd like to share. Um, if you'd like to join uh, uh, this kind of uh, video screen and show your own screen, uh, after Manny's discussion, we'll kind of open it up and you can join and show your face and we can hear your voice if you'd like to as well. So that's a little bit of logistics. Um, so I'd like to pass it to my friend here, Manny. Um, Manny, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself um, and the type of work that you do and then maybe introduce how you, how you came involved with Learning Circles in Peer to Peer University. Sure. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I am the program administrator for college and career pathways here at Notre Dame Education Center in South Boston. And the the idea to participate in the Learning Circle pilot uh, with a partnership with uh, World Ed uh, was more for, um, well, to address our need uh, to alleviate some of the wait list. So uh, most of our, our uh, the, the purpose, our focus, is to bring students on an onboarding um, system right from our wait list. So we did not have to recruit. Um, it was kind of just our wait list started to get longer, and we, we started to look for ways to um, to bring those those uh, those numbers down. So as a, a person takes a placement test and lands on a wait list, we then um, make cohorts with um, common goals. And that's how the learning circle would, would start up um, with their learning, with, with their goals in general. Um, so we how have- How many people were on your, oh, sorry, I'm just gonna, I was curious, how many, how many people were on your wait list? And uh, when did this oh, process, okay. it started about a year ago. <laughs> it started about a year ago and I, I want to say over 200. Um, so we, we tried to, to find different ways to alleviate that. Um, and the, the idea of onboarding was, well, just looking at our wait list and the different levels and, and going from there. Um, wh whichever level we see that we have more, uh, more folks on, that's the, the learning circle that we, uh, we start up. Cool. So, how did you how did you start? So, there was a number of people, about two hundred people, on a wait list with a number of different levels. Some were lower liter uh, lower English levels. Some some were higher skilled. Um, how did you start this process? So, we we, we attacked the idea of um, trying to find a higher level first um, as a pilot program, uh, thinking that it would be a hybrid, that there would be a, an online component to it. So, we started with Burlington English. Um, and uh, so it was a higher level. Um, our, our level four is SPL six to eight. And we wanted them to have a, at least one common goal. And that cohort was employment. So since everyone wanted um, to find a job, either uh, get a job or get a better job, um, we we went with that so that all the discussions, the, the the work online, everything was geared towards English for employment. Just becoming more, uh, seeing that employability um, come up. Cool. 
And uh, why did you choose Burlington English? I know there's a number of different courses out there. Have you, have you thought about, have you seen any of the other ones? I know there's USA Learns and there's a few other language uh, yeah. courses out there. Why Burlington English? Where we, um, NDEC is the, the hub. It's currently the um, hub for, for DESE uh, when it comes to ESOL. So we are aware of other programs. What we wanted uh, was to be able to allow the students to branch out, that it wasn't just grammar or conversation, but it was English for some kind of goal. Um, that additional next step um, started at the initial interview or intake. So that from day one, they, uh, the participants are creating a path, um, a pathway, if you will, from, um, from that what I want is to get a job. OK, well, uh, you need your English. You have a job. Now what What else? And, and from day one, knowing the difference between getting a job and getting a career and moving them towards that, um, starting that scaffolding. Yeah. So, so I mean, so you had these 200 uh, wait lists. You started working with higher level skills for um, and using Burger Link to English, specifically for getting employment. I mean, you've run many, from what I understand, you've run a number of different programs before, English language programs and employment programs. How did, how did learning circles differ? And what did you, what did you, what challenges did you run up to? And what, how did, what, what benefits did you see to that? So how did they differ from other programs, I guess? Okay, well, well, the learning circle is, it's, it's peer to peer. It, it's, uh, um, there's, I'm not a teacher, I'm a facilitator. The students are not students per se, they're participants, in that they are, um, they're leading the discussion. If they decide what their goals will be, what do we need to work on, what are our challenges, um, and, and it becomes more of a support group um, in the sense that it's not your traditional classroom. Um, it, it, I'm not, the, the teacher is not giving homework. The idea is not to um, emulate a traditional class, but to create a bond, create a cohort that will move into the class and, and that um, can hold each other accountable. So uh, in the learning circle, we're, uh, because of the learning circle, we're able to see uh, if a student is truly prepared to commit to a five-day if they're in the morning. So a learning circle meets once a week for an hour and a half, two hours max. And for six to eight weeks, they, they're they kind of gauging, is this, am I, is this really for me at this point in my life? Can I commit to this? Can I commit to more? Uh, because we're, we're, we have that higher expectation of, okay, now you have to meet five days a week, nine to 11, and you have math, and you have technology, and, and all these things that add to their very busy lives already. So uh, mm -hmm. that, the, that part really helped out. So there were several different components to the learning circle that, um, that we, we embraced. And, and, and we saw it more of an, an initial challenge just to get mm -hmm. used to. And, and for those students who are used to or think that's what they want, they want the traditional, to suddenly say, well, this is not a class. This is a, this is a group. This is uh, you're in charge. You tell us what you want. So tell me a bit more. I'm super curious about that because we've uh, we've worked with a number of different um, educators and libraries, and some people have said come at it different ways of introducing learning circles because, it, as you say, it is different. This approach, this sure. peer learning model, is is different. And people are not always used to that. Uh, the learners are not used to that. The, also, the instructors or, or, or facilitators are not used to that. So, how, how did you how did you how do you set a, a, how do you introduce learning circles that set a good tone? I mean, I think what you said at the beginning, um, but you might have some other ideas. Yeah, um, right off the bat, um, you, you know, I I use an analogy over and over again about uh, driving, being in the same car, and uh, usually the person that drives is, well, it, it's a person in, in control of the vehicle, where we're going, what we're doing next. Um, and just knowing uh, or, or allowing that participant to know they're driving. 
and and I'm I'm sitting. I might be sitting in the front just because I've been there before, and I can give you directions. Maybe you should turn right here. Maybe you should watch out for a stop sign here. But uh, they are making the decisions and they are setting the the foundations that will lead to um, to their next steps. So right. I, I think that that's the initial the 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 first part in having a buy-in um, from the students and from other professionals, from professionals in the area, is, is to, to know that it's um, put the rules to the side. Um, and it's more laid back and it's more of a support group um, and helping them create that bond. So we have a few, I mean, the, uh, Notre Dame has been doing this. There's been a number of other kind of adult education and. English language learners who've been using peer learning circles as a, a model to for English language learners. Um, so we're doing some research. I know David Rosen's on the call. He might have some uh, insights and uh, results to share. But from your own experience, um, what have you seen any specific results that you can share or outcomes? Uh, yeah, while it's people very, are, yeah. What what what, what can it's you? It's very share? exciting. It's very exciting. It just because this is again, this is uh, we're in our third round of this this first year uh this pilot year and already we've seen uh 100 percent of our students have moved on to actual classes um, we have students that uh, have gone from uh, the learning circle to a, an intensive five-day class to um are, have completed that that level and have gone on to um, some job skills uh, courses, customer service, medical terminology within our same uh, um, Notre Dame Education Center and who have actually gone and gotten jobs and have gotten into college um, just that just needed that little push and and that cohort keeps on I, they're they're meeting up with each other outside of the class and they're checking in on each other if they happen to end up in different classes. Uh, so it, it is something that you uh, takes a little bit in the beginning, but it, it kind of takes off on its own. Hmm. Great. Um, do you have any advice for other, I mean, there are so many people around the world trying to learn English. There's lots of people who just want to meet up for support groups, um, right. but specifically in your own context of you know, supporting people to get jobs and other types of uh, English language learning uh, centers. You know, do you have any suggestions for if they wanted to try out to start this model, what would their first steps be, or you know, how would they? What would be their first steps with starting a program like this? Um, I, I think that knowing your target audience, knowing the need, um, and allowing, uh, giving true freedom for the for the individual for the participants to to get there at their own pace. That it there's not a deadline that everyone must get to this point um, by this date, but kind of letting it be a, a little bit more fluid. Um, that allows, uh, that freedom allows them to not pigeonhole or close themselves in as well. Um, so I think that that's very important. Um, in in the recruiting, I mean, I, we were lucky that we didn't have to recruit, but it, if I were to be recruiting, I would say, um, making it as clear as possible that this isn't a traditional class, uh, that this is, it's, you're gaining um, that knowledge or you're gaining a lot of knowledge from your peers um, yeah. and that we can learn from everyone. Um, yeah. I think that that's important. I wanted to go back because I would just have a memory of I was you know, asking you about setting the tone, but when we think about learning circle models, you know, it's a pretty basic concept, you know, peer learning, you kind of start with a check in. How's everybody doing? Um, you know, you go through some course material online together or in discussion form, and then you have a checkout. And I was remembering, uh, you know, you have your own little special guest that comes to yes. as a learning circle. He's, like, he's, he's not a guest. Me? He's not a guest. He is oh, guess. Sorry, sorry. He, he, sorry. Yeah. He's a co-facilitator. Um, I, I have him right yeah. here. Um, and his, <laughs> his name is Red. And we use red as um, a talking stick, if you will. If 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 you have uh, red in your hands on your lap, then it's your turn to speak, and it helps because um, you know we always have some participants that can speak 
more or that are more active than others. So this kind of gives everyone um, equal ground so that if you are more of a quiet participant, the facilitator would get read and, and give it to that person. So it's your turn to speak. It's your turn time to share. And um, through the process of, of Delta and, pro and Plus, um, we use red a lot. Uh, where we, we, you know, what what was something good that happened um, this past week, and and what is something that you wish would have been different, or that you would do dif different, uh, that you that you've learned from, um, and red really helps it. Um, just holding um, something and, and knowing that you know you're you have the table, you have the floor, and everyone else is is learning that respect of. Someone's talking, so it, it's not my turn. And eventually, red will go to someone else, and then it will be that person to speak. Great. Yeah, I, it's such a simple concept. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, it, but it, I think, I mean, often, you know, when I was at, you know, different educational spaces, it's like it's you're often being spoken to so much, mm -hmm. and then, yes. and I, I feel like I we often miss this, the opportunity just to give people complete attention in a small group yeah. and you know I've, I've done I've seen people use talking sticks before and wow it gets like you know be overwhelming with emotion especially when someone has something to say like everyone totally listens and it becomes a bit of a ritual too like people kind of get excited like okay like now we gotta do this like <laughs> I'm ready I, I'm ready to listen but I'm also ready to say something yeah. when it's, my turn with red um, yeah so I think that's a really important point point with any meeting just kind of Having a really meaningful check-in, like what's going on? You're a real person, and then also a checkout, like what what worked for you today? What do you want to do exactly. next? Um, that's so important. Um, okay, cool. Well, that was really nice, um, Manny. Do you have? I mean, I think I covered most of my questions for you. I think we're going to open it up to others that are listening here. Are there other ways that, as a facilitator, you help to build peer support? Come again, you. you Oh, I'll, I'll say that again. Uh, are there other ways that, as a facilitator, you help build peer support? Um, within within the, the, the group, just allowing them to um, to set their their understanding of an opinion. Uh, many times, the topic would would be something more controversial or more um, more challenging that uh, a teacher would, might veer away in class. Um, and having that, uh, oh, we can talk about this. And, and having that, uh, allowing them to disagree and be respectful in, in having their opinions. Uh, that, that seems to really been more of the role of the facilitator uh, to be um, kind of a moderator. And let let the conversations fly, and 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 their opinions, whether I agreed or not. Many times, as a teacher, you want to control the situation. You're there to to manage the class, and letting um, the students manage each other. The participants um, will then see that um, that there is it is a safe place, and there is that freedom. Hmm. Great. Um, in a related topic, and I, I think you addressed this already, but you know, was that transition? How did, I mean, how did people see you? People had seen you before as the expert, right. the learn, yeah. the the people who, you know, you know where the jobs are. You know what the right answer to this English question is. Like, yeah. you know, why can't you help me? You know, from that point, they they knew you. How was? How did that? Uh, how did they? How did you uh, take on that transition for yourself? And how did they come to see you as somebody as a manager? <laughs> yeah, it was fun because they they were excited that the that the director is teaching this class. Um, wow, so that's yeah. great. Right. And then suddenly, wait, but the director isn't teaching. Um, he's just gonna sit there and hold this red teddy bear. Um, and <laughs> and just having that uh, moving from the he's not teaching, even though he knows this, he's not gonna tell us. Um, Many times it was it was like a game. It was it's a it's a puzzle where, um, although they know that I have the answer, they value the process mm. that they have to get to that point, and and that if they're going 
somewhere else with it that they trust that I'm going to say, hey, hold on, let's let's come back, let's regroup. What, what's happening here? Um, what, where do we go off? Uh, just again, and that analogy of that car of where, well, maybe we should back up. Maybe we should would have should have taken that left turn instead of a right, um, and allowing them to do that to turn the car around to rethink. Okay, what what should we be doing differently? I think that uh, initially, yes, you get that. Why don't you tell us? That's what you're here for. You're the teacher. Uh, and then you, once they get past that, well, we're all teachers. We're all learning. We can learn from each other. Um, and, and it's a lifelong process. We're constantly learning. Um, so that, that part, um, it's beautiful once it's, it's embraced. Yeah, it sounds like you were modeling it a lot as well. A lot. <laughs> um, we have a couple questions about uh, some of the more logistics about this. So one question from um, Eunice, who's um, uh, she was asking, you know, did they did they like Burlington English? Uh, so you know, was it a good a good process? Was it a good course? And also, uh, did they use did they were they involved with that course outside of the learning circle or just during the learning circle? So how did you interact with the course material? So, so um, we're like I said earlier, we, we're on our third round. Um, all three rounds have been different levels. Uh, we found, of course, that um, our first uh, round was with level four, and they were able to do a lot more than our second round uh, with our level ones. Um, so with Burlington English, we start by just projecting it off a smart board and having them work together as a group with just one or two activities. Um, once they, they became um, comfortable with that, then we brought the laptops out and have them start to work individually. Um, so just having that no pressure, we can, we can choose whether we're going to do it together or we're going to try to do it individually. Um, that, that was another choice that, that we gave. Um, just the going from the different modules and 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 in Burlington English, it really depended on their goal. Um, they seem to really enjoy it. Yes. Um, right. The. Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Keep going. Um, with with our current group, we have a level three, which is an intermediate, and we switched to level three because we noticed that we had. Um, a wait list growing on that level. So it's okay, let's 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 give it a shot for the intermediate just so we could have a better picture where we start we checked out the higher level and then we checked out the lower. Let's see what happens in, at the intermediate level. And they the this this group uh, has a, a higher level of computer literacy. So from day one they wanted to do it on their own. So we were able to connect other components to them. Uh, so that they could um, have a, a more one-on-ones uh, -on with the computer. Um, the, this group now uses the computers uh, and Brent in English outside of the group, but our first two rounds hadn't. It was hmm. solely inside the class, inside the learning circle. Okay, um, and I mean, based on have you have you noticed any changes? I mean, I think. Uh, ideally, you want to have a, a healthy amount of dialogue in person with people. But what's your take on kind of, um, kind of having that extra bit off of, outside a learning circle or in learning circle? What's the difference? What have, what have you seen? Well, it, yeah, it, it, the growth is uh, besides the pre and post testing that we do. Um, the growth is very apparent with the conversations, the, mm -hmm. with the plus and the deltas that they come with. From, from their time away, uh, because they have a little bit of time to process what's happened in the learning circle. Mm. Uh, and then they have something to show of what they did while they were away. Um, so that, that they, they come excited about that. That's called homework. However, that's not what we call it, because they're doing it on their own. We're not right. assigning it. They're choosing to um, either do uh, go back in or revisit what we have, have done or try to go forward a little bit ahead. Totally. I, I feel like we need a new word for that. Yeah, surely. <laughs> yeah. You know, I know in like self-directed learning, like 
we're, we're, you know, we're confronted with education models and we're, you had this model of the teacher telling the student, this is what you have to do after this. Or the flipped model and you do the homework when you're in the classroom, but you do something else. So it, what is it when you just want to learn it because you think it would better your in-person meeting? And it's, maybe we need a, well, it is homework. It's always homework. I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, so another question, uh, just practical one. How long did these circle? How long did you do the, uh, these uh, learn circles go for? Four, five, six weeks, as uh, Pamela is asking. And then also, when it ended, what what happened? Did people just uh, reapply for another learning circle? Did they move on to the formal course? What happened afterwards? So we have our our learning circles here are six to eight weeks, and uh, once they complete those six weeks, they're onboarded. So they, they're able to bypass the learning circle, or the, sorry, the, the wait list. So that's another thing that uh, they look forward to. Uh, because they did the learning circle, I now am no longer in the bottom of that wait list. So yeah. I'm able to, to, to jump in. They go straight into one of our ESOL classes. Uh, so the, that, that was the preparation. Um, if they had that good attendance, if they show the progress, um, then they're ready. They, uh, they are... Um, part of the center, they're cool. given they're given a a, a school ID um, from from day one. Um, they're they they're part of all the agency wide activities. Um, as participants, they they kind of know they get to know different people already. They, they know the receptionists, they know the different directors, the different teachers. So they they're part of the school. They they feel like it's just going from one day to multiple days of the week. Cool. Um, another question, I and mean, I've also wondered this as well. Um, we, with our current dashboard at p2p.org, you can register a learning circle, and then you, people who register, you can communicate with them through text message, send reminders, and kind of an also email. We've seen learning circles communicate using WhatsApp, uh, creating their own Google groups, um, you know, just straight up phone call, checking in on each yeah. other. Uh, do you have you have you seen people using any kind of communication app for communicating outside of the learning circle? Um, um, not well. Yeah, the, the the participants share. They choose to share their numbers with each other or email addresses. Um, we don't require any of that. Um, we have a, a a Weebly page, a student Weebly page that we use um, as a center, um, and we introduce that. To the learning circle, so they're able to see what other classes are doing, um, what the classes would look like, um, what the materials would look like, um, and they, they seem to really um, appreciate that type of transparency. Um, I'm also the ESOL level four teacher in the morning, so I, I'm and and for my class, I don't give. We were talking about homework. I don't assign homeworks out loud. If you need to. You need to see the homework. You have to go to the Weebly page. So they're looking at their phones or they're going to the computer right, right, right. to see what the assignment is going to be. And that kind of excitement of what's going to be on and we have to wait till 3.30. That's when Manny puts the assignments in. Um, that kind of excitement around technology um, really helps to navigate that or to, to move away from the fear of I'm going to break this computer if I touch it. Great. Right. Cool. Uh, I think that that answers most of the questions that were asked on the forum here. You know, before we end, thanks, uh, thanks, Manny. I really appreciate you. Thank your, you. And we'll be posting this on our YouTube and our forum for other people to learn about what you're doing in Notre Dame and Boston.